In today's tutorial, we're going to add fog and atmosphere to our scene. We're going to go from this to this. So let's get started. For a while now, I've been feeling that our scene was just a little bit flat. And this is partially because of the lighting, but it's a big outdoor scene and it just doesn't have that sense of depth and atmosphere that I want. So today we're gonna fix that. First, when we built this level, we started out by using the time of day template and that automatically gave us a directional light, a sky atmosphere, sky dome mesh, skylight, and volumetric cloud elements in our scene. And these are already set up to work correctly with each other by default. And so when you create a scene, I recommend doing that as well, especially if you're creating a big outdoor scene like I am. Now there are a couple of more things that we can add uh, that will improve the scene, add some fog, some light shafts, and some things like that. So let's get going. The first thing that I want to do is talk about the relationship between the directional light and sky atmosphere. In order to do that a little bit better, I'm going to turn the camera around so we can look off to the horizon over here. And then with my directional light selected, I'm going to hold down control L and I'm going to click and you'll see this little widget appear. And this allows me to control the direction of my light. Now, what I want you to notice is as I move my light down toward the horizon, the whole scene gets kind of this yellow orange color. And that's a really nice effect that's simulating what Earth's atmosphere does uh, when it scatters light. So you can see when the light is high in the sky, the lighting is kind of a, a white color. And then as it comes down toward the horizon, uh, it turns into this uh, nice orange and yellow glow. And that's pretty cool. And you can see if I toggle on and off my volumetric clouds, that even without the clouds, we're still getting that same yellow and orange tint with the sun on the horizon from just the directional light and the sky atmosphere. And these things are controlled in the sky atmosphere by my Rayleigh settings and also by my me settings. But as I said before, the main thing that's missing is a sense of depth. So if I turn around in my scene here, you can see that there's just no uh, fog that goes off into the distance. So let's let's rotate our camera around again. and we'll put it in the sky in front of us. And what we want to do next is add some exponential height fog. So I'm going to open up my place actors window and just type height and you can see I've got this exponential height fog component and I'll drag it into my scene and right away you can see that every everything becomes super foggy. Now there's a problem with this exponential height fog and that is it's made to work on its own just by itself. And that's not how we want it to work. We want it to uh, use the fog settings that we're already getting, especially when we move the sun down to the horizon. So if I hold down control L again, we're gonna try to move the sun, you can see if I put the sun on the horizon, everything is just staying blue. And the reason for that is that this exponential height fog comes with its own uh, fog scattering color here. It has the directional in scattering value and the fog in scattering colors. And both of those are overriding uh, the, the ray and the me scattering that we already have set up on our sky atmosphere. And so what we need to do is set those so that they inherit from the sky atmosphere instead of overriding. So under edit, we're going to open our project settings and under search details, I'm just going to type height. And here you can see that we have this setting called support sky atmosphere affecting height fog. So we want our 
sky atmosphere color to be what we use for height fog. You can see that I've got that checked on. If it's off for you and you check it on, you're going to need to restart. So go ahead and do that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set fog in scattering color to black. And we're going to set the directional in scattering color to black also. And the reason that we're doing that is because these values are additive with the scene that we already have set up. And now you can see that the fog that we've added is actually using the color that we have from the sky atmosphere. So now if I hold down control L again, I'm just going to close uh, place actors now that we've got that. I'm going to hold down control L again. And as I move the light around, you can see that the fog that we added is now taking on that nice uh, orange and yellow color as we move the sun down to the horizon. And that's exactly what we were looking for. That's pretty cool. All right, let's turn around and look the other direction. So I'll move our sunlight so that it's coming from this direction. And you can see as we move our camera down to the horizon, we get this really beautiful yellow and orange glow as our exponential height fog takes on the color uh, that it's getting from the sky atmosphere. That's a really nice effect. And if I come back here and turn on our volumetric clouds, again, you can see that we get this really nice uh, peachy orange and yellow glow. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is add some light shafts to our scene. And so I'm going to come up here and select my directional light. And I'm going to scroll my properties down to light shafts. And I'm going to turn on uh, light shaft occlusion and light shaft bloom. And what light shaft occlusion does is anywhere where an object is shadowing the light, it's gonna darken that area of the fog so that you get a nice uh, dark light shaft. You can see one of those right here in the middle of the scene where uh, the light is being shadowed by these trees. And then light shaft bloom, what that does is wherever the light shafts are bright, it's going to add to the bloom. So let's come down here into our trees so you can see. Uh, here's a nice example of uh, light shaft occlusion. And then here where the light shaft is brighter, uh, a nice example of light shaft bloom. Okay, now this is a little bit intense. You can see that my sun is kind of flickery. And that's because by default, this bloom scale value is kind of high. So I'm going to turn this down to maybe... 0 0.1 or maybe 0 0.05 and also the uh, actually bloom scale value I'm going to leave at 0 0.1 but the bloom max brightness which is causing this flickery sun here I'm going to turn that down to maybe something like 20 or 30 and get something more realistic all right so now we have some really beautiful light shafts coming through our trees we have the sun uh, behind the clouds there, illuminating everything. Let's take a look here. If we hold down Control L and move our sun some more, you can see that as I move it around, I get these really pretty light shafts coming through the clouds and through the trees. And everything just feels uh, really natural, really beautiful. So <laughs> go ahead and do this to your scene if you haven't already. Uh, it's pretty easy now to set up some really neat time of day effects because I can just move the sun and as it uh, comes down toward the horizon, uh, you get some beautiful colors and you get these really cool realistic looking light shafts as the light shines through the clouds and through the trees. And as we come over here to this side of the map, now you can see I'm getting that really great sense of depth that I was looking for that's coming from this exponential height fog. You can see that if I turn this off, we're back to our scene looking super flat like it was before. But when I turn on the exponential height fog, now you can see that the scene feels like it's distant, like there's this great sense of depth. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, and so I'm really happy with this result. So that's our video tutorial for today. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, if you create a new time of day scene in Unreal 4.26, you automatically get this volumetric clouds object. And you can see that I have these volumetric clouds in the scene. I can toggle them on and off here. And they look pretty cool with the sun shining through them like this. Um, but what we're going to talk about next week is actually how to control these volumetric clouds. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into how to make a shader that controls the volumetric clouds uh, and customizes those. You can see that the results that we're getting right now on the volumetric clouds are really kind of fuzzy and blurry. And so next week, I hope to improve on the look of these clouds and get something that's maybe a little bit more detailed and, and maybe a little bit more realistic. So be sure to come back next week for that tutorial. If you enjoyed the video today, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate all your support, everybody. We'll see you next week.